So once again, we're getting ready to put the pistons in. So first thing we want to do is some brake cleaner on a rag. Nice clean rag. Run that through our cylinders. Make sure it gets all cleaned out. Okay, after we've cleaned our cylinders out with a nice clean rag, we're going to use a little bit of engine oil. And we're just going to coat the walls nice and even. Just get it lubed up, get it clean. And make sure it's all ready to take our pistons and new rings. Okay, you'll notice our box of rings are marked top groove, second groove, and obviously the oilers. And if you happen to dump these out or um, lose our tabs with the cheat sheet on them, you can usually tell by the tabs and how the rings are cut and beveled, as which one goes on the top, middle, and of course the bottoms, always obvious with the oil rings. Make sure you use a cheat sheet whenever possible. Uh, this box of rings came with a cheat sheet and that describes which direction these piston rings go into, um, whether they're not marked, got a tab, beveled, whatever. Make sure you follow these and get them in the right place so you don't have any problems. Also describes how to get the oil rings in, oil scrapers. If you ever get lost or confused which direction the rings go, just remember tits up and you'll be fine. Okay, since this is a unfamiliar block for us um, and we're not sure of our machine work or where everything came from, we're just going to check our rings really quick for a gap and we put our piston ring in there, we squared it up using a piston, make sure that it's nice and level all the way around. Um, formula is four thousandths of an inch for each inch of bore so this is a four inch bore and with 30 over 30 thousandths over so it's going to be just over 16 thousandths of an inch clearance for our minimum gap so we just check the gap in there and our 16 thousandths fits fine um, we don't really want to go more than a little over 20 of course this is a naturally aspirated motor uh, if you had a supercharger, turbo, nitrous, any other super high heat producing engine, the uh, gap's going to be a little bit more, but you need to check the specs on that on whichever you're building. So this one clears, we're good to put our, hang our rings and put our piston in. Okay, we're going to hang the rings on the pistons now, and before we do, we uh, have made sure that we use some Scotch-Brite, cleaned up the tops, cleaned up the sides, clean out the grooves where the rings go and remember you want to keep this engine clean every step of the way it's just going to save you problems down the road and make everything last longer now someone has marked these pistons for us with the number punch they put them at the top of the piston not recommended because that can collapse the piston and cause you more problems but like I said I didn't take this engine apart it's all used pieces and we're just putting together what we have Normally you want to use a number stamp and you want to stamp the rods and that's a lot stronger area, the cast iron instead of aluminum. The piston or the valve relieves at the top of the piston are going to be at the top of the engine when you put it in so all the oil would seep down as it rests, come to a rest at the bottom of the cylinders. Um, not necessarily above the rings but you get the point. So what we want to do to keep from smoking and to keep oil from passing through, either way coming up from the bottom or going down from the top is the gap on our ring. We're going to stagger it. So the first one will be at the top of the piston. The middle ring will be at the bottom of the piston this way. And then our oil ring will be, of course, at the top, and it will be staggered when we put that together. So first is our oil ring, as you can see. These are very springy and flexible, makes them easy to go on. Here are our oil scraper rings. Make sure the gap is butted up against each other. You don't want it overlapping. We're going to do that one first, the center. 
We're going to begin the top ring just offset about an inch from our gap. Our gap for the middle ring is in here. We're going to offset it off to the right just about an inch. Start from that side, come across the gap, and spiral our ring in like so. Make sure everything fits nice. Our bottom oil ring, we're going to start on this side to the left. Um, you'll see the middle springy ring, the gap is there. The gap on the top ring starts there, we work this way. The bottom ring, we're going to start on this side to the left of our gap and work it around this direction. That just keeps it from pulling the springy uh, oil ring apart. And we're going to make sure it's a nice fit. Everything slides, all the grooves line up, and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn all these gaps, and we're going to point these gaps up, which would be to the top of the cylinder. So we have our two gaps here and springy gap in the middle. Okay, here is our ring expander tool, like so. We're going to lay this on. And we're just going to spread that out a little bit, and we are going to drop that down into the grooves. Once again, we have our ring expander tool. This is our top ring. We're going to put this on with a gap at the top of the piston, where the valve reliefs are. And the middle ring should have the gap at the bottom. Okay, just like our main bolts, we want just a little bit of oil on our threads for our rods so we can torque them down right and you can use these little rod rubbers or some vacuum line or fuel line to put over the end of these rod bolts to keep uh, your crank protected from getting scratched all right get some nice clean engine oil on the piston like so make sure we get the oil on the edges of the rings. Top ring gap at the top. And our ring compressor. On like so. Make sure it covers everything. that. Crank it down. Alright, number one piston. It's mark number one. Valve release at the top. Slide that guy in there without hammering the sides. Line it up. Even out the ring compressor. Make sure it's straight. Handle the hammer back and forth. Make sure it's going in straight. We have our plastic gauge in place. Tab on the bearing usually points towards the bottom of the block. So you want to check and make sure so that it lines up correctly. If the rods and everything are hung right, everything should be in place. Going to install our rod cap. Put our nuts on. Okay, for anyone who's not familiar with a torque wrench, this is a torque wrench. This one happens to be a Craftsman. They've got little numbers, little dial on here. And what happens is this handle spins and it tightens up on these numbers and you line up the notches to tell you exactly how many foot pounds or inch pounds, depending on the torque wrench you have, you have it set at. Okay, we have our torque wrench and we're tightening it up, we're winding it, we're just setting at 45, lines up with 40 on the main part and 5 on the handle and then we want to turn the lock so we don't lose our torque setting. We're adjusting our rod nut on our Stroker 383 Chevy 
and it sounds like this when you reach a torque it right there is 45 foot pounds and you hear the big click that means that the nut or whatever you're torquing is set correctly okay we have our rod in place we have our plastic gauge in place we have our rod torqued down now we're going to take the rod cap off and we're going to check our plastic gauge to make sure we have the correct clearance on our bearing as you can see from our pattern from the plastic gauge we're pretty much at the minimum clearance um, maybe just a little bit over or under depending on how you want to look at it so all we need to do is hit this a few times with our scratch bright pad and put some assembly lube on it torque it down and move on to the next one just got to do this eight times for each engine again after you've checked your pattern for your plastic gauge you can just peel it off with your thumbnail you're not going to hurt the bearing or anything just clean it off before you put your assembly lube on and put her back together torque her down okay as I mentioned before on the main bearings anytime you torque a bolt down you grab a sharpie and just mark it a little bit that way you know you've torqued it down, there's no second guessing yourself, you're good to move on. Remember whenever you get done using a torque wrench, unlock the handle and twist it back to zero. That way you don't mess up the calibration on your torque wrench, it keeps the spring and parts inside working properly. Now it's very important when you're working to stop and take a break once in a while and have something to eat. Pizza, wings, and Mountain Dew usually works just fine for me.